The book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ is one of the most difficult books to understand, filled with symbols from beginning to end. No doubt, the visions of the Apostle John have challenged us for centuries, often leading to such outlandish interpretations that all we can do is scratch our heads at times. Despite this, I believe Revelation can be understood, and when perceived correctly, reveals a certain logic and aligns with other critical concepts in the Old and New Testaments. Before we can understand who or what Babylon represents, we must first consider some simple but profound concepts that establish a firm foundation on which to build. The first is the spiritual meaning of two. In his book, The Biblical Meaning of Numbers from 1 to 40, Dr. Stephen Jones gives us the following. Beth is a house or household in Hebrew. God established the household with Adam and Eve, two people in a marriage. This provided direction, a double witness in the family to know the will of God. It takes two points to make a line and establish direction. The number two signifies either division or a double witness. God established two covenants in the Bible, first as a double witness of truth, but also to establish direction. Going from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant shows a progression of revelation from the lesser to the greater. This same principle is found with Hagar and Sarah, Ishmael and Isaac, with Jacob and Israel, with David and Saul, and in the New Testament, in the contrast between Saul and Paul. In each case, there is division with a resulting conflict between the two characters. Yet also God establishes the pattern of moving from one point to another. The number two signifies either division or a double witness. When two people disagree, we have division. But when two agree, we have a witness. Simple, but profound, for this number testifies of God's purpose from the beginning. When we consider the creation story, we find division on each of the six days of creation. On the first day, God separated the light from the darkness. On the second day, God separated the waters from the waters. On the third day, God gathered the waters together so that the dry land would appear. On the fourth day, God made two great lights to rule the day and night and to separate the light from the darkness. The number four denotes a foundation, for most buildings are situated on a foundation of four sides. So it is that on the fourth day, the foundation of the world is completed and ready for the living creatures that God would form on the fifth and sixth days. On the fifth day, God created the living creatures in the waters and in the heavens or sky. So division or separation continues. On the sixth day, God created man. And the division on the sixth day, male and female. So one might ask, what's the point of all this division? The answer, God begins with division to arrive at a witness. That being said, let's go to the following from the concordant literal New Testament. In the beginning was the word and the word was toward God and God was the Word. This was in the beginning toward God. What I like about this translation is the phrase toward God. This immediately makes me think of the following. For of Him and through Him and to Him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Three just happens to be the number denoting a complete witness. Two witnesses are enough to establish truth, but three brings completeness, clarity, and shape to it. So of him, through him, and to him are all things. We also know that the kingdom of God consists of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In John 1.1, we're told that the word or logos of God was in the beginning. In perfect agreement with division and witness, we find the following. For the word of God is living and active, 
sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's easy to see that this passage regarding the Word of God is twofold in essence. How many twos do we see? Five, which just happens to be the number of grace. When we add the first and second twos referring to God's word, we have four, the number of a foundation. When we add the twos referring to you and me, we have six, the number of man and his enmity toward his maker. When we add all of our twos together, we have 10, the number that points to the judgment of the law as pictured by the 10 commandments. God begins with division to arrive at a witness. How do we know? Because when God created the female from the male, Adam declared, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. 2. Becoming one. That's union or unity, is it not? Now, let's bring this to our present reality. Do we not desire relationships? Of course. And is it not also true that we desire a certain unity in these relationships? It is. For that is how and why collectives form. At its simplest level, a collective is a group of like-minded people. Thousands of examples, both secular and religious, exist all around us as evidenced by the countless labels that identify them. The problem with many of these collectives lies in the fact that, while seeking unity, they often create division. Interestingly enough, within the scope of the six things God hates, sowing discord is at the top of the list. No wonder the proverb states, by pride comes nothing but strife. Whether secular or religious, every collective formed by pride includes the seed of its own destruction. On the outside, it may appear unified, but on the inside is an empty shell. And the destruction I speak of, it may not be visible to most. Now, before I close, let me introduce an illustration based on the spiritual meaning of two that will help us as we continue in this series. That's it for this study, but be sure to join me in the next as we take a look at the illustration of the two great lights. Thank you for being a part of Grain and Wheat Publishing and Studies in Scripture.